Okay, guys, welcome back to the BGJ 101 Storeroom Podcast. This is episode 25, and again, we're joined with some with an awesome guest in Casey O'Connor. Eduardo's back here again this time, so uh, fourth degree Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and head instructor at, and owner of um, Gaha Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu um, Brisbane. And I'm Anton Manenko, I'm a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu back, black belt as well. And also, very recently, <laughs> Casey O'Connor, he's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt as well. Um, Case, we always, I, I'm just going to ask the same question now. We kind of like half did this already, but yep. we're going to redo it because we had some problems with everything. But um, just start again, like kind of introduce yourself. Go a little bit more into like kind of your story a little bit. So talk about yourself a little bit more growing up, that type of thing. And also like along the way where you were introduced to martial arts. Right. So I <clears throat> I was born in New Zealand, born in Auckland in New Zealand. Moved over here when we were six. So when I was six, seven, around 89. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Saw all the footies. I remember driving down the Gold Coast and saw the bears. Always wondered what the bears were. And yeah. Dad said, that's that's a gay sport, as <laughs> Dad would say back in the day. <laughs> um, and then got introduced to rugby league, obviously, and absolutely fell in love with rugby league. Still in love with rugby league. Um, and I was 28. Um, and you always, always, always really, really trained hard. Yeah. And not smart, but hard. Yeah. Um, and for me to get introduced into jiu-jitsu, so oh, watch the, um, Ultimate, the Fighter. Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. That first Ultimate Fighter, I watched that finale with Forrest Griffin and Stefan Bonner. Yeah. And I'm like, Whoa, well, that was amazing. And then, so then watched the series mm. and saw the jiu-jitsu and then went back and watched UFC 1 and saw this guy hoist, d- demolish these people that were kickboxes like way bigger than him way stronger than him yeah and i'm like man that's that's a superpower i've got to know what that superpower is and you always heard about grappling and um in the rumblings of rugby league and yeah, like, yeah i'm gonna do brazilian jiu-jitsu for an off season um so i was somewhere in kruparu was doing jiu-jitsu somewhere in kruparu for an off season so for about three months yeah and i think that that first game back for that season was my best ever first game back wasn't blowing hard like usually i'm it takes me four or five Exhausted. games to get yeah. that match fitness, but you know, top tackle count like I do generally every week anyway. But I wasn't falling over myself exhausted, yeah. um, and that was my introduction. Blew me knee out a few weeks later, uh, yeah. and it was jujitsu after that. That was my J- just come back a little bit. So what was it? What was it like growing up, like moving here to Australia, and then also like all, all your kind of junior stuff and like getting into like an adult through rugby yeah. and just like life and that type of thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so I just, uh, mum and dad loved it. They And I was talking to mum and dad the other week and they'll say how much they miss me playing footy and yeah. it's for them to socialise as well. And, and man, the best thing about playing team sports yeah. is always someone, someone's always got your back. Yeah. It, not even in your own grade. Like people that know you are older than you or and younger than you, they've always got your back, which right. is, um, which was a really good thing. But, a certain level of camaraderie that yeah. you get from being in a group. And it's it's also like kind of like a brotherhood type thing. Yeah. yeah. But, and you have that on the mats in jiu-jitsu too. Yeah. You roll with someone and you have a good roll with them. You know, you've said it before. It's like you have a roll and they do something on you and you're like, well, oh, that was clever. And you'll giggle about it. Like you're like they've got you in something mm. and you'll laugh about it. Oh, that was clever. I'm going to have to watch out for that next time. Yeah. Um, and, and it's like that in footy, you know. You just yeah, create a bond with someone yeah. who physicality i suppose yeah, yeah, for sure um <laughs> i suppose we miss that now in life where yeah. two guys would disagree with something go belt it out and then go have a beer afterwards yeah, you yeah. Know? yep you got me it was good yeah. <laughs> that kind of attitude or like yeah like this type of masculine kind of behavior is very very like aggressively shamed and shunned and kind of like uh, put toxic down toxic masculinity yeah, yeah like toxicness and all that type of thing like Look, of course, I'm not promoting people go out and just bash each other all the time and <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. But like, they, you can do that in a productive way. You can do it in a wrestle. Like, man, how often have we had guys from all different backgrounds come here and talk about how, man, when you know, when you're with all your mates and you and you you do this and you have a couple of drinks or whatever, and we start wrestling, wrestling. and we start doing this, yep. and, and it's not even in like a a, a neg- like a violent way. It's, it's just a, a, an expression of. You know, I mean, your 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 masculine energy, just expressing frustration and and the anger and the man. Th- this is something that, like, I think a lot of people don't understand is like the violence that men can commit has been kind of like 
man, the, the, the atrocities and violence that all human beings, not only men, can commit is kind of been like hidden. And yeah. people are crazy and horrible and violent. They're not just one thing. You cannot, and this is a thing also, is like you cannot be one thing. You can't just be perfectly amazing and this lovely angelic human being. That's not realistic. There's no such thing. The, 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 the biggest beauties that you're capable of, you're capable of just the amount of horror, the, the same of the opposites, yep. correct. And, yep. and this is something that I think is kind of missing from the world. Like people want to pretend that we're, we're spice and everything nice and it, it's not true, man. And and this causes a lot of problems in society, in my opinion, because you're teaching to people to be dishonest about themselves. You're teaching people you to be dishonest about themselves. You know, the funny thing, there's a new terminology the now in psychology yeah. called the the um, the um, toxic positivity. Do you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Toxic, toxic positivity. Man, I was, I was, I was uh, reading this... Uh, Sorry, uh, listening to this discussion the other day. Everything's beautiful. Everything's great. No one talks badly about no one. And then <clears> as soon as you have something like bad happen to you, like you don't know how to deal. So you kind of like go yeah. super down spiral, you know? Not learning from yeah. bad things happening. Not accepting yeah. that, man, life is not going to be like the way you brilliant want or the way you feel, yeah. Like how you can make it like this curtain that everything unfortunate doesn't doesn't operate like that. No, man, life's hard, man. And, and we can't expect, it. the more actually you uh, open for that, you see that the threshold will get bigger. Yeah. Mm. So if you just close the door and think it's perfect, you know, it's not going to be the same threshold. No, no, life's, life's hard. And whoever thought that life was going to be easy, or they think that life is going to be easy has a really, really rude awakening, and we're just super lucky that we're we're here. We're in Australia. Yeah. We're, we're born in a yeah. in the Western world. Yeah. Like we are so super lucky, and it's just amazing how high our, like suicide rates are, and yeah. um, especially it's, in men. It's interesting this kind of paradox because like people that are born into situations that are so much easier and better and so much more. Um, entitling and, and opportunity for and all this stuff they're the ones that suffer with all these ridiculous kind of like psychological scenarios like oh, man aside from like some asian countries where there's a big culture of honor suicide rate is highest in western situations in western world where you're the yeah. most where you're the most privileged and have the most opportunity <laughs> what man it's, it's i'm true. serious well you, you've 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 seen it more than what we have like suicide rates in brazil in favela like in the in the areas where the favelas are they'd be super low yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah, completely. But, to, but you don't think about this stuff. You're just surviving every day. There's enough difficulties yeah, for already. you to, you have to. You don't to, have to create them yourself. Yeah, yeah exactly. Are, there's enough yeah. difficulties that you have to be present, be active. I remember when I used to uh, to go to university and, and uh, on the way back home, it was a peak traffic. Yeah. And the buses in Brazil is like, man, literally, you have people uh, like going through the, the window, you know, Probably not got, like hanging out the window so full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Or getting through the window, yeah. like Climbing because in, oh, they they into the for example, for here, mm -hmm. if I tell here the bus have a timetable. Yeah. yeah. There, the timetable is whenever the guy decided to come. Like, you don't know. <laughs> yeah. So you can wait for another two hours. It doesn't have work. It's gonna be every hour. It's just gonna be one, yeah. one now, one. Who Later, knows? Yeah. So everyone will get on that bus, man, no matter what, <laughs> how many people. So the capacity doesn't matter. Yeah, the capacity, yeah. whatever, how many people is not can carry yeah, for yeah, the bus, yeah, right? Yeah. So I remember getting to the bus and rush time, going back home, just going, my whole, my whole concern <laughs> is like, how can I get out of this bus at my stop. time to yeah. my stop? Like yeah. this, man, and some days it's like, it's not going to be possible. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, so every have day you have your concerns are so much bigger than your normal. Yeah. You don't have the time to kind of like worry about, you know, oh, you know, oh, I'm not feeling, man. You're not feeling. You have to do all this shit. There's, yeah. no, there's no other way. You yeah. Know? yeah. That, that's it. You do it or survive. Yeah. Survive or don't. Yeah. Yeah. Fight. Yeah. You're fighting. That's the, <laughs> you know, that's the funny comedian said, you know, you got people. You know, trying to fight off lions and they have to walk 10 kilometers to go get their water and then come home and then fight off the lions and mm. on the way home they're not killing themselves and you yeah. know, we get these guys we get you know guys that aren't reaching their goals you know they've reached they've reached their goals of uh, like Jim Jeffrey said yeah. you know uh, I wanted to be a comedian and like sell out a pub done that oh, I want to sell out a stadium arena done that I want to star in movies oh I'm not starring in movies that's it I want to kill myself yeah. you know like it gets to Crazy. that to that point where it's so fickle so man spoiled. like correct it's so spoiled it's so entitled it's so fickle it's yeah. like 
if I don't feel good at every moment of the day, <laughs> if I don't, if everything's not perfect at every moment of the day, man, life's not worth living or what I'm doing's not worth it. Nothing's worth it. Oh, why me? Why me? Life's not fair. Life's it's not so worth hard, it. Yeah. Life's so hard. Like, man, Jesus Christ. Yeah. We, we've got to say this is a better. scary kind of like version of the world that's kind of being you know adopted in a lot of countries man it's crazy to knit with, man. And, and you see it with jiu-jitsu man yeah i see it with jiu-jitsu people competing or whatever or just like the craziness approach of how people want it i oh, mean yeah man we've talked about this before about individuals coming here man they're like in it it's just so imbalanced and like chaotic and like unstable the way people are because of this like attitude man the, they'll come here and they want to be a world champion today i want to fight you i want to train with you man i've had people message me saying that they want to book times to train in the class i'm like what do you mean what do you, what do you wait, wait a second like what are you asking mid -class? no they're like i've had people message me online saying that they want to train with me i want to book a session with you uh, what do you mean a session? no i want to train in a group class with, with you. you and i'm like what like, do you mean like that'll happen naturally you don't you can't you, you don't just like book the, man do you want to book a private that third five minutes please. yeah great. Yeah, the fourth yeah. one you should yeah. be a little bit more with, with, <laughs> with me yeah. and i'm like what are you talking about yeah, dude? Yeah, shit. you just come and train that's just it you don't train. book things or do it like and and you know i mean these are people that haven't been training for long oh or wow. whatever and, and you're just like man like <sighs> <laughs> I, I don't understand. I don't I'll give you that. someone that's not going yeah. to belt you as bad as yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it, just this level of entitlement or this level of like, um, like, what's the situation? Like, just man, I I deserve this thing or this is what I want and I want it now. Like, man, this deserve is nothing. No, but but it's just weird. Like, yeah. it's just a weird situation. People don't do their dues anymore. I used to get upset about stuff like this. Like, and I look I look at it very differently now. Like. I remember when I used to play footy at a fairly decent level and stuff like that, and I would get annoyed and upset about being like this 18, 19, 20 year old dude, and I wasn't, you know, in the in the first grade team or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you should be pissed off and upset, but man, you have to understand that you've got to do your time, yep. man. You've got to do your time, and that was something that I had to learn. Like, it, it doesn't matter how good you are, it doesn't matter how good you think you are, it doesn't matter what you believe about yourself. You got to do your time, man. That's a good thing about sports as well. I remember I was too I was too fat. I was a uh, defense, and uh, they soccer. taking yeah, yeah they yeah. taking like these kids to play in um, in Denver in US like yeah. in competitions right, <laughs> and there was like Coca Cola, a little bit of sponsor, but um, and the coach said to me, man, the the fields there are too big. You're too fat. I mean, yeah. son, you know? yeah. If you lose these many kills, I'll take you. That's not bullying. That's reality. That's reality. Yeah, yeah. That's, well, but if you yeah. said that now, you'd get cancer yeah, as a coach. Yeah, imagine you tell that the mother would yeah. call you, take you, remove you, put on the, the social media. Yeah. yeah. See, I don't get this right. So fat. Fat is like saying you have a black shirt. Yeah. You are what you are. Yeah. If you're offended by that, that means you don't like it. So let's do something Nothing about it. it. But it's easy to just say, oh, accept your curves, girl. Nah, don't body shame. All this, like, <laughs> I love curves, man. All, I love all curves. This, yeah, man, we love curves or not. Yeah. Like, or not there, like, no, but there's, there's, a, there's a point in which it's not curves anymore. It's just being unhealthy. And, <clears throat> and the thing is, is like, whether it's your partner, your husband, your wife, your, your family members, whatever, they're doing that out of like a place of love where they're concerned for your health. They're not doing it in a way to like put you down and make you feel bad. If you feel bad about it, or if you feel bad about anything in life, you feel, feel guilty about things. It's not the other person's fault. <laughs> yeah. That's an internal feeling that comes up in you because you recognize that there's something that you don't like about yourself. Yeah. You have blonde hair. Ooh, that was <laughs> offensive. That's it. We're going to change it, turn it purple then, you know? It's, Whatever. it's but the same the, thing. It's the, thing the thing is, is like the experiences that come up in you and are a reflection of how you feel about yourself, not what other people... People don't make you feel anything, dude. You choose to feel, <laughs> feel that, that way or you yeah. feel that way because of what you believe or what you understand about yourself. Yeah. And that goes to, any, to anything, yeah. literally. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you're upset about something, man, it's not... It's not this, you can control that a little bit better. Yep. Huh. And, I, and I feel it's super important that, like, people try to find hobbies or, or like work on their mind you know through meditation through yoga through having their like a hobby that they like to do or some people that they like to be around find things that makes them like um, more in, in contact with themselves like to yeah. evolve as a human being so be able to deal better when things gonna go because life things yeah. will gonna go and settle things yeah. will be will have some days that are not the same as the other la 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 and it's super important that and I think that this is being very, um, people are trying, you know, you're going to see a lot of people, I mean, you talk to everyone, everyone's like busy doing something professionally, 
or trying to study more mm. and but no one is actually giving so much value for this area mm. Do you know i think yeah. it's an area that's very um uh, I think neglected the yeah. hustle and bustle of the western world yeah it's it's hard to navigate and it's man. so important because the balance man is the key you know when yeah. it's easy to what I love about jiu-jitsu though it kind of teaches you how to deal with that sort of conflict that in a yeah. you know you don't like yourself about something it kind of like if someone does offend you you're like yeah but i'm not getting choked out mm. <laughs> you know yeah. uh, it really helps i remember i was working in papua new guinea and this is the only time I've, you know, I've been doing jiu-jitsu for over 10 years now. It's the only time I've ever had to use it outside of training. And, you know, we've got a group of about 16 of us and we're working in a container. There's 12 yeah. of us in this container. Yeah. And then we go out and we do our work and we're all working together and you do it for six weeks at a time, someone's sometimes 12 weeks at a time, 12 hours a day, nonstop. Generally, after that amount of time with the same people, you're going to get the shits with each other. Yeah. And there's this one guy who's a bigger guy and like he kept punching all the fellas and he kept, you know, like putting everyone down and he, he'd kinda, had enough. Kind of like bullying. Yeah, like bullying. Just I, being super frustrated and aggressive and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And then he started doing it to me and I just pinned him straight away. I said, no, nah, mate, this is not happening. If you've got a problem, like we'll go, we'll go outside and we'll sort it out now. And he said, no, I'll, I'll sort it out right now. And we're in this container and he went to shove me. And as he went to shove me, I just like arm dragged him, put him in a choke straight away. I said, tap or you'll fall asleep. And he's tapped and he said, so sorry, man. Like he was so sorry. He said, I was out of place. I won't ever do it again. I said, yeah, and stop doing it to everyone right, else yeah, as well. Yeah. Man, it was great after that. Yeah. No dramas after that. Didn't and, have to hit him. I didn't have yeah, to do yeah. anything. And you didn't have to be overly aggressive no. or violent because you have the ability after. And the, the, like, man, this is something that most like human beings that are uh, all, all the new age kind of stuff, male, female, whatever, will never experience this type of conflict. No. And they will never experience someone pushing back like you have in a way that's like a learning situation. Yeah. Yeah, you have something wrong with your character and you need to change it. <laughs> and and just because all, really fast. just because all these other people are either not in a position where they can do anything about it yeah. or they're too polite to do anything about it doesn't mean that there isn't anything wrong with how you behave. Yeah. And this is something that is lost from the world, in my opinion, and that you have to do difficult things to learn about. You, you can't learn about yourself doing comfortable shit all the time. It doesn't <laughs> work. Nothing's comfortable. But if it's worth doing, when, when you it's do, not but see, this is this is a thing, and 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 this is why I generally feel that men, women, whoever, whoever puts themselves in difficult situations and really challenge themselves, which for the most part generally is dudes in your position where you're in a container le earning money for your family and doing all this stuff and working as hard as you can putting yourself in compromising shitty situations to improve yourself and improve the life of your family That's or whoever it. you're responsible for yeah and the people that do that that you by default going to be put in situations that are uncomfortable that are going to create situations like this that that teach you about yourself and about the world man yeah and th this is gone from the world because it's it's it, 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 it's uncool to do these things. It's uncool <laughs> or it's un whatever the word, whatever insert like um, catchphrase word or whatever. The, to, like, man, everything, everybody just has an excuse for um, evolving now. Oh, it's not my fault they're toxically max masculine. It's not my Toxic fault masculine. they're to toxically positive. Oh, it's not my fault. It's Everyone's a, toxic. A I'm a not toxic. for everything, yeah. They're, they're, no, there's just a like convention set up to buffer people from realizing that they've got issues. <laughs> and we all do, and you need to work on them. Yep. Yeah, and, I should always be trying to improve and yourself. 100%. And, and jiu-jitsu and other martial arts and difficult physical things don't allow you to, to use that buffer. Because mm -hmm. like you said, you can either run 100 meters or you can't because you're 40 kilos overweight. Yeah. Because either you can go around and bully everybody and no one does anything about it or someone knows jiu-jitsu and says, hey, listen here, dickhead. I'm not <laughs> into this. Yeah. Learn how to deal with yourself and stop pushing it on other people and bullying them and doing all this shit. This is what happens. <laughs> like the real life situation. It, it, correct. Really. If you're actually out there striving to improve and be better and doing this stuff, you, you, by default, you're going to have these things come up. Most people will never access this part of life, man, because it's too difficult. It's too hard. It's I can't be bothered. Oh, it's easier if someone else is the problem. Blah, 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 blah. Mm. Always the same stuff, man. And, man, like I, I find it interesting because <clears throat> everyone we've talked to that's either achieved the black belt level or 
gotten in good positions in life and whatever, they completely reject that attitude. And <clears throat> also because you just recently got your black belt, <laughs> yeah. um, I like I would like to ask you, case okay, so like, what are you know you you know you um you you had obviously there was you know like f have family had injuries through along the way mm -hmm. you live uh far from the gym yeah. which is already a, a very hard thing to deal mm -hmm. with in itself yeah. Yeah, right have a family that you have to support <clears throat> and all the commitments etc so how what would you be ad your advice for um someone that's like starting jiu-jitsu or want to start <clears throat> jiu-jitsu what do you think they should concentrate on at first, you know, and what do you think they should be their mindset for towards it? Yeah, oh, it starting's great. Just starting, just turning up. That's the, the hardest part about not just jujitsu, yeah, any sort of door. exercise, something that you, you know you want to do or have to do, but don't want to do, like just starting is the best part. If you just start and then just keep turning up and then you find it's, especially with jujitsu, it's so addictive. You know, you get that three weeks, four weeks in and you're kind of starting to roll. You're kind of starting to have that little bit of feeling about what their weights are doing and what your weights are doing. And, yeah, my advice is to keep going. Give it three months. So that three-month mark and then you'll have the new person come in and they'll go and you'll feel it. You'll go, oh, shit, they were just like me mm. three months ago. But you have that little bit more knowledge. It's not much knowledge, especially in the lifetime of jiu-jitsu. Jeez, I've been doing it for 10 years and I still feel like I know nothing. I feel like, you know, yeah, I have a black belt, but man, I've got to keep turning up and that black belt is useless to me. It's absolutely useless. But that's, that's the attitude that gets you to a black belt to begin with, man. Like, oh, it's addictive, man. I love it. I really do enjoy. I think, I think a lot of people come and do, or just do things in general for the wrong attitude. Like they're doing it for like a, um, exterior motive it's oh, like for the belt That's i want to i want to do it because i want to have the prestige of a belt i want to do it for the prestige of winning a title i want it for the prestige or the the, the idea of how i'm going to be of this badass dude or whatever the hell <laughs> like that, that shit is not that shit's fickle just like all the other stuff we talk about it doesn't last man yeah you, I, driving driving an hour to and from sometimes two hours to and from training yeah. a, a couple times a week that stuff, you, you have to be truly motivated to come here and put up with that every week, man. Most people never put up with that. No. The, I, these I external, it, these yeah. external ideas of like, I want to be this and I, and I, I, I. It's the same bullshit attitude of like about me, about me, selfishness type of stuff. It's fickle, man. You cannot last in anything in life it's still selfish. with that type of attitude. It, uh, that's me still being <coughs> selfish. That's yeah, but me. it's a positive way of being selfish. Yeah, like that's me going, I can't get worse than I am. Like, yeah. I don't want to get. I, I don't want to go backwards. I never want to go back. And you have three months off, or I've had a, over a year off jujitsu before. Mm. You know, through knees and yeah. you know anyone who's done jujitsu for a long time knows. But I come back and I try and train really hard. I try and train really smart, and you know, em big emphasis on try, mm. um, because I never want to go backwards. I never. If you go backwards, it's just it's a, such a long journey to go forward again. Like mm. that three steps back and that one step forward is like walking in concrete yeah. compared to those three steps. When back. we talked about it, I think with Bruce said the same thing. It's yeah. it's it's you, you build momentum in either direction. Yes, hundred percent. Either you're building momentum moving forward, or you're bu bu building momentum spiraling downwards in a horrible situation. Man. It's like going downhill you, when you're going backwards. You though. can't. You correct. <laughs> yeah. You just start rolling downhill, and yeah. it's the, that downward spiral, spiral just man, starts going time. like. Man, you, you got to keep pushing forward, and even if it's one, two, half a percent increase, like a year, like man, that's the goal. Yeah, and You're that's why people forward. struggle so much <clears throat> to come back after a long stoppage. Yeah, 100%, yeah. and they and they, because the reality is so in their face, jujitsu doesn't lie yeah. that they go, they think yeah, they'll be able to be right. what, and and that's also I think it's a, something that people really need to pay attention. Otherwise, they will get they get injury as well. Yeah, because they come back from. Uh, uh, big time layoff, away, yeah. Yeah, away and then they come back and they think they're going to be that same guy <clears throat> their mind might be too sharp but they, the, the movement is not there the and sometimes they, there. they force and they feel really bad or even if you get injured and frustrated yeah. and yeah. that they have to be you have to be kind of you know with yourself, yourself and yeah. just be a bit more like man I mean, no way yourself, like, yeah. what do you expect you know yeah. what I mean I'm not going to be the same <clears throat> movement as I was and flowing as I was and but regularity I think is a key for any uh yeah involving in anything anything but especially like you, you can get 
if you don't get to a regularity, you're never going to tap the next level. You know, the ne- you're just going to be plateauing, plateauing, and spiraling down afterwards. You know? Yeah, but it's, it's like you said, though, with Jiu Jitsu, <coughs> once you forget <coughs> about those belts. So for me, it's always, I want to get better at that position. I want to get better at that move. Um, I want to be better at those sort of chokes. Once you forget about the belts and start thinking about Jiu Jitsu itself and yeah. what, that, what part of Jiu Jitsu you want to get better at. I think that mindset's a lot better to go through with jujitsu. I agree, man. This is something that I want to mention about like the selfishness stuff too. I think people have to reframe how they think about things like really aggressively because like we're sold all these ideas, man, in life and we sold all these ideas in particularly Western countries and you, and, and, and a lot of the ideas are not to benefit you, but to benefit just the way the system works. It's about you being a consumer, about you being – the same as everybody else you become almost like a hive minded individual that just does what the majority does and i think the way people need to reframe things particularly about selfishness and to do with the belts and stuff like that is like you need to be selfish for like real like positive points like all right about self-improvement you need to be selfish about not how you look for other people because you're going to have a bell, oh, yeah. but how that's going to affect you in your life and make you a better individual. And that's a positive thing to be selfish about. It's, it's, it's okay to be selfish about you and your family compared to other people. I wouldn't even get to the point of calling <laughs> selfish, but it is, though, call it is self-centered. You know what I mean? Mm. Like you have to kind of, it's just you improving. Yeah. Yeah. But see this. Yeah. But the, the problem is, is like e- even these buzzwords like selfishness and toxic and all this shit, they, they, we even said like another word before that we're not going to say because people will get upset about it. Yeah. Like it, they, these are words in the English language that describe a thing. It's just only in, in a modern day situation that this word has become so bad to mention that it, it, people will lose their jobs over certain words. Like, man, it's just complete lunacy. It's complete lunacy to think that a word that just means something it, because it's that person has been labeled this thing, that person's evil. But if somebody else that says that that's not labeled that thing, it's not evil. It's just complete lunatic shit, honestly. <laughs> like the stuff that's happening, like in Western countries or in life, about like selfishness. If you don't follow a particular imperative or way of thinking and stuff like that, you're for whatever a, a horrible person. And this is what I'm talking about: reframing how people think. What people are taught and told is sometimes not what's best for human of humankind, humanity, your life, whatever. Sometimes being violent with someone is a benefit to the society. It's a gentle, the gentle art. Correct. Yep. Sometimes it's a benefit to go and do things that you've been told not to do. Do you know what I'm saying? And I think people really have to think for themselves and stop just listening to just generic The next bullshit. agenda, yeah. The, the, what's the, uh, this is what we're doing. This is, yep. That's probably not the best thing for you. Yeah, the, you know um, what I mean. Th- this is what I mean about like uh, uh, most people that come here because jujitsu is impro- improving in, in quality and um, it's improving in um, its popularity and stuff like that. You're going to have now large portions of people that only train for a couple of weeks and leave. You're going to have large portions of people. The majority are not what the ones staying. And in- how often does that happen? <clears throat> well, it's it's so it's it's as it gets more popular it's get more mainstream and then you have more people trying with because they heard yeah, or someone this is, so this you is get my these point, people man. that is not yeah exactly they're so not serious you, you about do. it they're so, just coming for reasons that are not we like so they can say they've done jujitsu maybe yeah, yeah tick a box you know yeah. Yeah, tick a box they head on a podcast but my point is is like my point is about this is like that selfishness or that self-centeredness whatever word you want to use is of an exterior motive it's a fickle idea it's not a personal thing that is meaningful to you about self-improvement and improving yourself and being able to protect yourself and protect your family and all these things that are actually meaningful in life. No, it's it's about, I want to take a photo and post it on Facebook. Yeah. I want to get a blue belt so I can sh- say that I'm a blue belt and show other people that I'm a blue belt. And what I notice, and I think that you would agree with, is all of these people that you recognize that attitude with early on, they never last. They never last. Do you it see doesn't people matter. that change though? I, you would you'd see people that change. You have to. There's two outcomes. Man. You either you either assimilate and you change your approach and you change your view yeah. and you do this stuff and you get along you get on the boat with everybody else. Yeah. Or you go screw this bullshit. This is too hard. I don't give a crap. And they give up. There's only two two options yeah. in life. I'll tell that story. I told it last time when you weren't here, but I was rolling with Joey when we were up at the other old jujitsu. We yeah. were both white belts. We're both hard out. And he choked me out. <laughs> 
And I was so dirty about it. I went and I kicked the, the bags with it. I went and kicked the bag and I was like, oh, fuck, I know, fuck. And I was like yeah. blowing up the lux. Mm. And I went home and on the way home, you know, you, you go through everything like you do in your jiu-jitsu. <laughs> this is, man, we talked about yeah, this before. Like time, yeah. every time, man, there's always this like, and there's no music on, nothing, and you're just driving in yeah, silence, and you're just like myself. you're just like going <laughs> over and over and yeah. over in your brain about everything. And I was yeah. probably doing this for over a year by then, mm. and I come back the next day, and I come straight up to you and I you apologize, apologize straight I remember away. That. Yeah, and you you said straight away, I'm so glad you come up and apologize because I thought I was gonna have to take you outside and say, look, man, it's not on, and yeah. Um, and it was a learning moment for me. Yeah, like, this is a major turning point in life. Like, yeah. Why why get upset? Like mm. it was so good that he choked me. Like I learned that I couldn't get into that position with him. And he was a beast anyway. He was mm. just just one of, one of those guys that was really tough for me. But man, start, th- but. Th- for me, this is a this is a, sh- a true testament to your character as a human being because a lot of people will never put their pride aside to just like to do that. And to to recognize that, you know what, I screwed up. I made a mistake. You know what? I'm really sorry about that. I yeah, never intended that, to that. That for me that. happened before. That wasn't the first time. Yeah, that won't be the right. last. But that for me is a genuine demonstration of good character. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when you get to have a person doing that, it's like you see like, man, that's awesome. That's this this is a person that uh, recognized something that he didn't he didn't act because no all of us we don't act perfect all the time. No, mm. no. Recognize that, which is great. He thought through, and man, move on. We're moving on. We, you know, turning yeah. page. That's great. If you, that's very important to have. That was a that was a a big change <clears throat> from. For me, it was an Australian sports thing. Like you, at rugby league, it's a and, and rugby union team sports, hundred percent, hundred percent of the time. And we all know in jujitsu, you can't do a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. And that was a big learning curve. That, that that one session, I'll never forget that. And. And that was, uh, you know, I was training so much. I think it was trying to get into those trials as well for Abu Dhabi. I was training so much and, you know, obviously I was overtraining yeah. and <clears throat> and then it was like that whole, all right, it's, 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 it's a, you've got to relax as well as be intense in the learning, yeah. but you've got to relax in the physicality. and uh, Yeah, there's a balance to everything. Yeah. And, and like the only way you're going to learn that is if you go and put yourself in these positions. Yeah. And this is what I'm talking about with all the other stuff like, People avoid this shit in their life, man. And then they turn around and complain that they're not at the position they want to be in. No, man, I have family members that talk about not like, man, oh, you know, this is it is and this and this. And I'm like, man, like, what have you produced, dude? What Like, how how can you say all these things if you're not doing anything with your life, if you're not putting yourself into position to even fail, man? You're going to fail. Life's about failing and learning from that shit and getting better. And improving at whatever you want. That is life. That, correct. That, that, is, that, is, that is life. Adjusting and improving as a human being throughout everything. Yeah. And the more things or avenues you find to do that for you, the better you're going to be as a human being. The more you're going to evolve, the more you're going to have perspective on things. And we talked about it with Bruce about traveling. Like just traveling, if you go with an open-mindedness and a lot of people that have experienced lots of travel and being around a lot of different people. And I don't mean like, a lot of the um, people that come here that are immigrants that then all find a group of 10 people from the same country and live together. I mean, assimilating. And you talked about that on the last podcast as well. Like, no, no, no. Actually put yourself in a position where you are forced to improve, learn and adjust. Not find a comfort zone for yourself to just stay the same person because life's scary. Hey, pop quiz scenario, life is fucking scary. <laughs> it's fucking it's always going to be scary. Yeah. And the more you avoid this shit, the more you're going to be left in the toilet, man. So your dad's at like in another country going, no, my son is learning English. Yeah, He's yeah, doing yeah, this. Yeah, and yeah. the guy's doing a, a barbecue with, with his own. Ten, ten Brazilians, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, ten other Brazilians. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. man, come on. Talk about can't, Brazilian soccer. He <laughs> can't speak a word of English, oh. but he's learning English. You know what I mean? Like... It, and it's not because that he doesn't have the opportunity to. It's because they always choose comfort. This is the, the man. I listen to this show, son and thing. And like, as opinionated as the guy is, he has some good things to offer, and all, everybody does. Man, the most available avenue for you is to quit. Yeah, the most the available, the easiest option is always to quit. You can and give quit and even fail. order some food on Uber, man. It's yeah. like, yeah. man, yeah. <laughs> Life, is that? life's so easy now that you can quit. <laughs> Sit on the couch. And, and, and you know what's crazy? Life's been set up now in Western countries, but when you do quit, it's the other you're, person's putting, fault? you're putting yourself first. You're you're looking you're after choosing, yourself. Yeah. You're choosing the, the correct choice about you and your, How you I'm, feel? I'm, I, you know what? I'm doing the right thing for me. And all these bullshit conventions set up to make uh, yourself feel better about being a loser, about quitting or about all this crap. Yeah, that's that whole um, 
<clears throat> for me to look after, so for me to look after everyone else, I have to look, look after, after myself. myself first. Yeah, it's oh such bullshit, God. man. And, and what and a horrible saying that is. The, the, the problem is, is like people again, they don't understand what that means. Yeah, you do put yourself first. You put yourself first by taking charge of your life and doing the things that you want as the outcome of it. You, you put into practice everything you want in your life. That's how you put yourself first, and that means doing shit you don't want. And that means taking on responsibility you don't want that's hard to deal with. And that means all of this stuff. It doesn't mean be a fickle, go out and have passive, drinks, passive loser, go and have massage, drinks, yeah. feel good today, feel bad tomorrow, yeah. get submitted here, quit jujitsu, come back two months later when you feel better again, and then start like the, all, all, this mentality that you're encouraged to have ruins your life, dude. <laughs> it ruins your life. You're going to be a pathetic individual because you're not, you don't have the balls or you don't have the confidence, you don't have the, um, like respect for yourself enough to actually go and like no, you have no not drive. belief. You, you have no drive, you have no belief, you have no nothing to get anything out of life. Well, that's what I think anxiety <clears throat> is. Eh? Like I, I, I think everyone struggles from a little bit of depression and anxiety and stuff, but anxiety to me is that lingering thing in your head and in your stomach and in your heart going, I've got to do this. Yeah. Like, no, I have to do this. I need to overcome this shit, yeah. But you don't do it. Mm. You, you, you quit it or... You leave it for years. Or I read that's something like, very that's interesting like about that. regret and guilt. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. I read something yeah. interesting like that. Um, anxiety is the other side of the coin yeah. from excitement. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Sure. Because, yeah. man, this is excitement. All right, let's go get it done. And you're like, oh, my God. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. But, you, but those, it, this is the thing also, like, with all the shit, like, where you're, in, you're encouraged to do this, you're encouraged to, like, never accept negative emotions. Like negative emotions have to be avoided. This oh, no, utopian view of the world, it has to be perfect all the time. And if it's not, it's wrong. I think you grow the most from the negative emotions. <laughs> That's what yeah. I've been trying to explain this whole time, man. Like you cannot exist without suffering. No, no. no. Suffering is a part of life, man. Suffering is actually and, quite and, good for you. And you know what? You can pick your suffering. You can pick to go on jujitsu and get beaten up and go, holy shit, you know, I've got problems with aggression. I need to improve that. Man, I've had those experiences. Probably, probably any dude that comes from an aggressive sporting background will have to learn not to be a psychopath <laughs> or overly aggressive. Yep. Otherwise, people will not train with you and most gyms you're at will tell you to go. That's a part of learning. Mm. The problem is, is like we have conventions set up now for genders, for the personality types, for whatever, to remove responsibility from that. It's not your fault. You had these things happen in your life. It's not your fault they're toxic it's not your fault blah 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 insert catchphrase bullshit propaganda crap that just makes you feel better about yourself no matter even though you're experiencing horrible shit about yourself internally because you're not doing the things you want in life yeah the difference is the person that does something about it and the person that doesn't hey correct correct absolutely and Man, I, I just, I mean, I always harp on about jiu-jitsu and how it creates good people. And it also, there's bad people in jiu-jitsu too. It's not like a utopian view the of The average things. person that does jiu-jitsu though? Because you're forced to experience all of this stuff we're talking yeah. about. Somebody that ju does jiu-jitsu seriously and, and, and trains multiple times a week and does longer it for 10 times years as well, and stays here, stays here for the long run. Yeah. You can't be a, a terrible, 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 evil individual if you're going to put up with this shit. You cannot do it, man. Because you have to come and drive two hours when you don't want it. You have to drop your kids off and get them up in early and stuff if they're involved as well. <clears throat> you you got to you got to drive back and forth and you got to sit here in the car and you got to do man. It's just too difficult to do for you not to be like half reasonable as a human being. Yeah, yeah. and you have to be yeah. in, in such a, a connection, pursuing the best for you in terms of improvement all the time. Because right, you got your black belt, so now. And now there's three there's or four every purple day you're belts come and brown belts day, that yeah, are trying yeah, to bash you. And you're you, getting yeah. older. And, man, if you don't understand that w w the reasons why you're here, you know what I mean, it's for you to feel fitter, improve your mind, you know what I mean, Rela release your stress and feel better oh, involved in jiu -jitsu. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. going to stop. You know what's funny is like as much as comp competition has been like um, viewed negatively, like what we're talking about is competition is like a hierarchy of understanding your position in life and the things you need to improve and get better and stuff like that. It, it, it's, it's competition not, within yourself. Yeah. It's yeah. competition within yourself that's to fine. improve no, or whatever. Right. But, but the thing is, is like, that's what people need to improve. You need to put yourself in like difficult situations, competition, you need to put blah, blah, blah. Losing situations. You need to put yourself yeah. in situations where you're actually going to fail and yeah. you have the possibility of failing. And whether you're competing against another human being or about yourself or achieving goals or blah, 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 
if you don't put yourself in these competitive scenarios, you cannot improve. Could be for yourself. That is always. Yeah, well, hold the generally, it's always with yourself. <laughs> yeah, with yourself. You know, so this, 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 but see, this, do it again so I can do this better. Is, this is the reframing that's positive. So this is the re you. You have to have somebody else for it to be a competition. You can't improve doing jujitsu just by yourself. Yeah. You have to roll with someone it else. It's like I was it rolling is. with you the other day. Yeah, and I said, we had a minute and a half. I said, oh, I'm going to try and hold out you passing my yeah. guard for that minute and a half. I lasted 33 seconds. All right, next time I roll with him, we'll try and last 35 Five seconds. seconds you know? or, or a minute so, or whatever. I know I'm not going to beat him in a roll, but, but man, but this 35 is, seconds. This, is a, this is a this is a positive reframing <laughs> of the same idea. It's just that the majority or what's pushed is to look at it in a way as, oh, I'm not, I, I hate competition. It's never a competition. I don't compete. And those are the people that try to win the most. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whereas the people that positively frame competition and go, you know what, I'm just going to do a goal that's for me and not for other people. I need to beat this guy because, man, if I don't beat this guy, I'm going to feel bad about myself. Well, you, you're putting your happiness yeah. placed in another human being. Of course you're going to fail, man. If I tell you I'm going to try and last 35 <laughs> seconds without fast, you are going to try and pass that guy with man, 35 I, seconds. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Who knows? Well, you're not going to let me yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, and if you did, I'd be like, that's stuff. But, that, but this, I, I think it's a fallacy to think that um, the things we do in life or in, in the world is not a competition. You're directly, women are competing against other women to find partners. Men are competing against other men to find partners, jobs, everything. You're competing with other human beings. When the women come to the women's class, they compete against each other. When the men come to the uh, to the normal classes, the women go to the normal classes, they're competing against each other. It is a competition. Life is a competition. You cannot hide from that. The problem is, is if you frame it in a way that's negative for you and say, oh, well, competition's this and that and I reject this and, uh, and all this bullshit jargon crap to make you... No, I mean, look... I'm no, not, I completely agree with you. 100% I'm or, laughing because or, uh, it, it's like... <laughs> But you know, like it, it's man, you're born like, especially like uh, born less privileged life, countries. Man, yeah. you're born like everyone does. Like everyone does university, does master degree. <laughs> Not even people that does master degree will get a job after. Yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, a less yeah. privileged country, man. Mm. You're, you're born, born competing, you're born man. competing, man. Yeah, man. You know, like, you're born competing. But people reject this thing because it makes them feel bad about themselves. Because they're like, I don't want to compare. I don't. You don't need to compare. It's, it's just, hard. I know that it's yeah. hard, but frame it in a way that's positive, man. Frame it in a way where you're like, you know what? I want to come here three times a week. That's my goal. That's my goal. <laughs> that's turn that's up three times this, a week. I want to turn up yeah. three times a week. And you know all the other shit that you think about and that you get like envious of and all that crap? That shit will happen as a by, uh, as a byproduct of hard work. Not of not of uh, manifesting it into your existence and all this mumbo jumbo bullshit. Like, man, come on, dude. Yeah. Do you know a very difficult thing? I, I found it with myself as well. When we, <clears throat> the first thing that will come most of the time, certain things we we kind of postponing, etc. We <clears throat> or we know we should have it done, but we don't do it. Yeah. Procrastinated. We we think about that. We, the first thing that will come to our mouth sometimes is excuse. And we can right. see that clearly coming right. from other people when I ask them, man. Uh, why have done the first thing or two things I'll get is two excuses that I go like, what? Oh, the bad, the bad, oh, yeah, man, yeah. it's just crazy. You go, what? So you're saying that you're doing this because you're not having time, but this is actually going to give you more time. Like yeah. it doesn't make any sense, but we cannot. Paradox, so I do yeah. and think a lot when I, when I say something, I go and kind of rethink what I said and go, man, that's an excuse. And I think a lot of people don't do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. That's a massive excuse that I just made it up and come on, go and get it done. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. And, and because excuses are the easiest thing to come. Yeah. It's just natural. Yeah. You know what I mean? Why didn't I? Yeah. So I, I didn't make it even to the Q Cup level. I played A grade rugby yeah. league. And if you ask someone else who played Q Cup or got to that roughly that level, I'm not saying everyone, but the general person, and they'll go, oh, my knee blow out. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, the coaches didn't like me. Yeah. Or I didn't have any connections. And yet, yeah, the, 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 those might be contributing the, the, factors, but also... But ask the people that made it. And they go, I just didn't, didn't stop working. Yeah. I didn't stop oh, working. Oh, oh. I, and they I, made the difficulties actually an extra yeah. mile of gas and energy. And I, I had that attitude about rugby and yeah. shit. The same thing. Like, I would be anno I would be upset because, you know, you didn't get picked for this stuff. And, and, and like, uh, there's always contributing factors and all this social stuff and all this bullshit. But maybe you just weren't good enough. Or yeah. maybe you didn't keep pushing for long enough. And maybe all these other things as well. Like, That's and, I, the, and yeah. I accept that as well. You know what I mean? And there's things that you're not happy about, but it's too fucking bad, man. That's life is this. If yeah. you if you push for long enough and hard enough and do your time, eventually, and you're good enough, you should get there. It's you been, should. But if you don't, you failed on one of those areas, and that's why. 
And I've said this before, life should always be a meritocracy and you should be rewarded for what you've done and what you've achieved as opposed to who you are. Who you are is not a thing. <laughs> this is just a, a, who, who you a view, are is what you do. Is if that's what it should be. But it the allows thing is, you to breathe. <laughs> but that's about it. Correct. But like, think people now value themselves on who they are, or their persona, or what they think they are. That doesn't mean shit. <laughs> what does that produce? If you, what does that, what does that give? What does that give? Nothing. It's just your view of yourself or yep. your view of someone else. What have they produced? What have they created? What have they given back to the world? The problem is, is the view of yourself. If your view of yourself doesn't match the view of what people think of you, yeah. your view of yourself is it's wrong. extremely wrong. Yeah. Like you need to Adjust go home it. and have a big look in that yeah, mirror and for sure. maybe have some self-growth in there somewhere. 100%. But, the, you know, for people when they do ask They're not me, congruent with with their life, correct? They're, they're like, they believe they're this, but in actuality, this is what's happening. Yeah. And and this is, this is a byproduct of all these attitudes we talked about where you just remove accountability and you're just like, well, I'm just good how I am and life's perfect yeah. and I'm going to be a world champion tomorrow and all this bullshit. And that's, that's the type of delusion that you fed, like you, like, man, you build in yourself by adopting these attitudes. Man. Yeah. It's, um, and it's a rude awakening when you realize it's a rude awakening, man. Yeah. Cause well, life is always going to tell you it's just a matter of time. Melbourne storm take in players every year sort of thing. And they do like a, uh, I think they do like an SAS three day camp thing, yeah. every training, every season. So usually it's a whole heap of young fellas and maybe a couple of imports. Yeah. Um, and I remember this one year, I think there's a, I think there's a player called Kevin Proctor. He plays yeah. at the Titans now, but, and I think this was his biggest life learning curve. I think I'm pretty sure it was him. He said that they, um, so the SSS thing is everyone put your name in the hat of the player you don't want next to you, like in your barracks, you know, like you're shooting off and, and you, you're going to die. Like you're going to die, yeah. you know, and this is the player you don't want with you. And I'd say there was 15. I don't know how many there was, but I'd say there was 15. Every single player put his name down. Said no, Fast. we don't want this guy with us. Like, he'll so get us killed. Not a part you know? of the team. Yeah. Yeah. And he 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 took that and he took it on board and he became a starting second row for the Melbourne Storm, which is no easy yeah. feat. You know, yeah. played for New Zealand now and captain New Zealand, captain the Titans. Yeah. Like he grew from that. Hmm. He changed. He, he changed. changed his personality. Yeah. Based Man, on good on the feedback. coach is probably yeah. something that the coach thought about doing. You yeah, know what I mean? Very made, smart. Any if sort he did of that, that sort of stuff. You yeah, know, yeah this personal development. Yeah, leadership. very smart. Man. Especially when you're at that level, you know, and because obviously he thought he was it. Obviously he thought, ah, oh, man, I don't have to. I'm do the best this. guy yeah. ever, whatever. And they're like, you're the guy we don't want in the trenches. I mean, you know what the crazy thing is? Is like this is a high level athlete that's actually achieved something with a bad attitude. Yeah. Man, you know what's crazy now is the, the general person. Thinks like that. <laughs> yeah, man. The, ge- the the average human being. Oh, Joe, bloody so driving like, into the city every day for work. That's what yeah. they think now, especially if they got a thousand followers on Instagram or two thousand <laughs> followers on Instagram. And man, if you're a chick, it's even more crazy to navigate because. If you're 18 and you put a bikini photo up, dude, you got 4,000 <laughs> followers today. Today, man. You got 4 you got 4,000 plus, you got 100,000 followers today cuz you got a nice bikini photo on. How are you going to navigate that like man, that's you impossible. You get positive reinforcements from what you, you look you like. You cannot do any not for wrong. Who you are. No, but you're correct. And 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 whether it not whether it's what you look like or what you've achieved or the music you make or whatever, it doesn't matter. You can't do wrong. You can't do wrong if everybody's just groveling at your feet and going, oh my God, you're the best. You're amazing. Oh, oh my God, honey, baby, whatever. Oh my God, dude, you're amazing. Look at your abs. But man, like you can't evolve as a human being when all you receive is positivity. You're not. No, well, you can't. Positivity means you're doing it right. You don't have to change. Casey, um, might be hard to, to put it in numbers, but around like five guys that you like to watch their jiu-jitsu, like that you think, uh, you know, really interesting, yeah. that you like their style of jiu-jitsu? Uh, love watching Gary Tonin. Mm. Love yep. watching Gary Tonin. He's a very well-rounded individual. Yeah, man. just active. Always <clears throat> seems to never get tired, you know, little guy. Um, if we went back further, yeah. Um, Oh, okay, Charles de Bronx, man, in his in the UFC, yeah. not jujitsu wise, but well, he's got the most submissions in the UFC now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, his jujitsu is impressive, man. Oh, it's man. very nice to he, watch. Well, if you have the most the submissions in, in the, the UFC, UFC history, history yeah. yeah, and that's actually, he's, uh, he's, uh, I just saw today uh, McGregor is uh, trying to challenge him. Just already challenged him. When was yeah. the last time he won a fight? And uh, yeah. but man, it's funny because this is a fight that I would love to watch for a long time. I would love to watch this fight. The Bronx, amazing will, fight. yeah, jump on his back and choke him out. Probably. I hope like so. Like he did with Poirier. Poirier's tough, man. Poirier yeah. was super tough. So, and he's, you know, he's a black belt jiu-jitsu as well, Poirier. So. Yeah, yeah. no, I think it would be an amazing fight. Like, yeah. you know, amazing fight. But 
Anyway, um, so that's two yeah, for you. Yeah, that's two. Uh, always liked um, watching the old ADCC clips of the- Bruce? Bruce Flying Herbis. Love Flying Herbis. Arona? Arona, yeah. Arona, yeah. yeah. He's extremely Arona. athletic yeah, and impressive. Just that power guy, yeah. you know? I don't know. If he was on all the steroids, or yeah, not, no, but, he yeah. would have been. He would have been on all the steroids. <laughs> I think a lot, of, a lot of them would have yeah, been back yeah. then. But he was. He obviously did it at the right time. But it's super impressive, you know. No points scored against yeah, you at all. in ADCC. In yeah. ADCC, that's that's super impressive, impressive performance. Guys stopped too early, in my opinion. You know, should have fought for such a long. You Probably know. fell to bits after the all the the gear. Yeah, yeah. and then the yeah, and and everything. Well, yeah, because the muscles, <laughs> yeah, ligaments don't grow like the muscles do. So, yeah. um, when I watched Hodger. Roll with um, sure. Shesha. I just thought that was an amazing. You know, Hodger was past it. Yeah. He was completely past it. Taking on arguably the number one grappler. Well, time, yeah, of course. Of just one. Yeah. And yep. how long did it take him to submit him? Yeah. Not long, was it yeah. a couple of minutes? Not mm-hmm. even. Mm-hmm. So, and doing things that are not like super, super yeah, traditional. Yeah, super traditional. Yeah, that's no the leg craziest. locks. Just no, uh. no, just. From guard, I'll choke you from guard, you know? Yeah, yeah. That side. Go to the back that's and, not on yeah. the YouTube so show. basic. It was just, and that's the one thing we were talking about last time. Basics, they win everything. They win yeah, it was everything. just the most reliable shit, but it yeah. doesn't look cool. And that, and that's the thing, like, everything's about flash and enjoyment with the new social media age and everything. And it's like, you, pe- people are their brands now. They're not even themselves. They're their brand. Yeah. Your brand is who you are. Hustle economy, where I am, blah, blah, blah. Like, they're, they're not human beings anymore. Mm. They're their brand. Yeah. And, and like when it's about that, it's just about promoting, 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 oh, flashy, 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 looks, looks, looks. Yeah. It's hard to hard to um, find basic things enjoyable. You know what I mean? Marcelo Garcia. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. the two. Marcelo Garcia. Marcelo Garcia, man. Just, he takes everyone's back so fast. And uh, Gordon Ryan does that. I mean, Gordon Ryan's from the other one, but Gordon Ryan does that sweep now where he traps the arm. Up here in that nogi, and then they the shoulder clamp. Thing, yeah, yeah, the shoulder clamp, and then they sweep from, from there. And they're like, "Oh, that's a Gordon Ryan." No, no, Marcelo was doing that. Yeah, man. And and you go back. Ago, the, 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 I think, and he is, says it though. Yeah. Gordon Ryan says, "No, Marcelo was doing that." I, I think it's a common misconception that um, uh, what's the the Mikey Musumesi? He says this stuff too. He's like, "Man, you, 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 no one's creating any jujitsu. It's like fashion, man. Yeah, no, but it goes back. Yeah, yeah. but no, no one's yeah. jujitsu and wrestling or, or grappling has been around for the existence of time. Yeah, you think you invented this shit? You're crazy, man." <laughs> You're crazy. You didn't invent nothing. Oh, maybe some you way of, of one rap- change. No, yeah. Maybe oh, you adapted how you wrap it around your leg or some shit yeah. or lapel or whatever. Like this is like a little niche thing that oh maybe you invented. But man, outside of that, the human body's the same. Nothing's changed. You're not doing anything new. You didn't invent shit. It's always been around. Well, created systems like I think that John Danaher created a system with that legs, man. Uh, man, look ordering stuff is one thing, but creating the uh, this situation is not true, man. Ordering things and creating ordering a system. Ordering things ordering, and calling them Japanese words back it, it, on the day, it, it, like, correct, which, is the which is the cycling and returning back to history. And, or, or the same with CrossFit. Man, it's circuit training. It's the same shit. It's always been around. Or Zumba, it's always been, Zumba, or Zumba. Man, in Brazil. My mom used to do, but it wasn't calling like just aerobics. They just remarketed something <laughs> that <laughs> always existed. <laughs> It's uh, just a robot. Yeah, it's it's given it, it, it a fancy name. Zumba. 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 Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, Cross correct. Crossfit. So what happened? Million man. dollar business. Yeah, yeah. Man, sometimes Americans it's just a, really well. Sometimes it's Valid just a matter of time. UFC, like, UFC MMA. Look at that. Yeah. It's always been bare knuckle shit, and now oh, we put some gloves on, and now it's the UFC. Like it's always been around. Taxi it's drivers. Man. Uber. <laughs> man, here we go. Pan- Pancrase was MMA or mixed martial arts that was practiced in ancient the Greek Olympics. Pancrase, which was no rules fighting you couldn't like you, you yeah, couldn't buy it though as well you it, head butt, i don't right? know something like that yeah. but essentially it's the it's same thing involved. do you know what i mean like this isn't new stuff yeah. it's always been around the human body's always been the same male aggression has always been around people fighting for things and it's competing the oldest sport in the world man. correct be. beating the shit out of each other yeah, yeah the oldest profession in the world is something else we're <laughs> going to talk about but <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, man, like, dude, I just want to ask something that's slightly different, like on the same kind of point of view. But like, I've struggled with this. Probably Eduardo struggled with this at some point. You probably struggled with this at some point. We're bigger dudes in in like in the the setting of the world. Yep. You know, anybody that's up of ninety plus kilos or whatever is a big dude. Suppose you're a heavy heavier guy, and you can rely on certain attributes. What what are the what are the like um obstacles that you've had to navigate through that 
the best thing anyone did for me for that big guy because I could tackle as well. Yeah, yeah. And my knees were really good probably back then. And yeah. My hips were a lot better. Um, it put me on my back every single time. Yeah. For the first two years, I think, I, Ed's on your back. Even when you, you could start at the top, Casey on your back. Yeah. That was the best thing. I'd probably play more guard now than being on, the, on top, the top. Yeah. But for a big guy, if I'm a big guy starting jujitsu, and if a big guy comes in and and they say, oh, and they ask for tips. A big guy that actually come from rugby will yeah. have like Has you a know, bit of physicality. Like you, you even with the um, Cape Well, like the other day. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they, they, they kind of go on the bottom. They not, they not, they never train to be like. On never a, there naturally. They actually yeah. train to get out from the bottom. They're so explosive so and powerful. They never go. They there. never yeah. done a guy in their Kurt, life. Kurt Cape Well, Ed's talking about from the Brisbane Broncos. Yeah, there, yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, just being on my back for those first two years. You know, being a white belt. Starting me blue belt, yeah. and even now I, I still, if I'm a bigger guy yeah. doing jujitsu, I and I'm rolling with anyone that's even probably my size or smaller, yeah. who is not as skilled as I am. Yeah. Even if they are bigger, I will start on my back. I will pull the gun. But when I first first started, you'd start on your knees and you'd have this stupid little wrestle to try and get on top. And I th I think back to that and go, you idiot. You know, that was one of my, you know, things you look back on, you go, oh, I wish I didn't know that. I wish I knew what I was doing a little bit then, you know. But that big guy, um, because I always say to the little guys, you're naturally going to go on your back. And that's why little guys generally get more, um, they're more technical and the bigger guy. Yeah, I, I talked about this in some other podcasts too, is like, Generally speaking, people play to their strengths. Like if you're a strong guy, you're going to use power. If you're a flexible guy, you're going to use flexibility. If you're a guy that's quick and elusive, you're going to use that. You're going to try and run around people and whatever. Yeah. Regardless of the attribute, it doesn't make you better at jiu-jitsu. <laughs> you already had that before you came here. Yeah. Now, it can increase your effectiveness of jiu-jitsu if you learn how to build a game of techniques around your attribute. And you should lean into your strengths as a human being. You should, but you still need to work on the shit you're not good at. Man, you got to work on those weaknesses. Correct. Yep. And if you're a really big, powerful guy, you might have to be quicker. Or if you're a really big, powerful guy, you might have to work on your mobility and flexibility. But you still lean into your strengths. Well, you you naturally, naturally going to do that anyway. And you yep. should seek to But I think you have to areas. learn first. Yeah. The problem is like using strength Doing the wrong, like no, nothing of course, valid. Of, co of you know? course, that's that's the yeah. point that we're kind of saying. You need to kind of step back a little bit. But like, how do you, how you stand? Do you, what are you trying to achieve? Then, yeah, of course, your strength you, is. That's what I'm trying to ask, though. Is like, how do you navigate as a guy that can just rely on strength? Because the problem is, is for a lot of dudes that are powerful and, and strong, they will just rely on that for, for about three or four or five years, or yeah. however long, or two years, or however, however strong they are, work until it doesn't work anymore. And then they go, "Holy shit, I don't do jujitsu anymore." <laughs> This blue belt means nothing. Screw this. I'm going to do Kung Fu. Whatever, right? <laughs> how how do you navigate that early on and understand that like, man, this shit ain't going to last. That's a you, good you coach. You cannot rely on that. That's a good coach and, and understanding and trusting the people that, like I said, it okay. just threw me on my back. This is, this is funny, man, because it's like always the same underlying things coming up all the time, all the time, all the time. doesn't matter who you talk to. It's always the same stuff. And the, Bruce talked about this. It's like if you want to improve in certain things, find a good mentor. Find somebody that's done that shit before yeah. and listen to them and trust that they're going to help you with this. You got to listen. You got to be able to take in information, like anything. Like Everybody knows about. better though now. Now yeah, these days, you've right? got. You've, they don't. No one knows better. No one knows better. I don't know better. It doesn't. No, no one knows no, better. No, it, that's someone always better than you at this anything. Is, but this is the attitude of somebody that's already been through it and done that. The problem is, is people that are introducing themselves to this stuff. They don't think like you, man. They don't think like all the people we've talked about because they have not even achieved this position. So, so the question is, how do you teach the unteachable? Well, you can't. Well, they I think there's another lesson right? that comes that also, aside from the, the coach, that can be very helpful is when um, this person actually trains someone a lot lighter yeah. and he gets like completely like, you know, dominated or whatever. Sub, so my yeah, first time rolling, my And that is yeah. also, if the guy has a little bit of brain, Instead of getting like, oh, he can do that for a couple of times, but he then all over again, all over again, he goes, man, this yeah. I have to learn this because yeah. this is so the strength's not. The first time I did jujitsu, you know, for the off season for footy, and yeah. I was hundred kilos, I was fit, I was strong. powerful, explosive, yeah. man. And they said, oh, you can roll with this purple belt. Who would have been? So I was hundred kilos and I was lean, fit. Um, he would have been maybe seventy. 
Maybe he was a purple belt. Do you know who it is? Nah, it was someone at Cooper Reed. Right. It would well and truly be a black belt if he right. kept going by right. now. Right. But I, I, I took him down. He took my back and choked me within 30 seconds. Right. And that was number one most humbling experience of my mm -hmm. life. And again, that drive home thing going, that guy legitimately killed me. Like that was me dead. Yeah. You know? And I, I looked at him and I dismissed him. I'm like, I'm so, going to smash this. So guy. you kind of learned through experience, right? Yep. You learned through experience that I need, I need, I need, that's how most people <laughs> learn. Most people learn through experience. Most people are so stubborn and, and, and full of their own view of themselves that they can't actually see anything past their own nose. Yeah. But, until you experience things that go, wait a second, wait a second. Oh. I don't know shit, man. Yeah. I need to, I nothing. need to start listening to people. So that's why, that's one way to, to trust the process. Yeah. Is there any other ways that you can get people to trust the process without them just experiencing life? <laughs> or is that the only way people can learn, man? Like th this is no, the thing. I think, I, think like I, I think there is a small percentage of people, a very small percentage of people that will go and listen to other people's points of view and, recognize what they've done and look at them and re recognize that it's congruent and go, yeah, this guy is talking the truth because mm. look at his life and everything he says is exactly what's happened in his life. I'm going to listen to that. I think this is important that I trust this information because I can verify it based on everything that I've seen. I think I'm going to, I'm going to agree with this. I'm going to do that. Why is that so difficult for people? I think, we, you know, I think people are going to start to get better about this. I think right now, uh, for example, in the, on the internet, you have people teaching uh, uh, different subjects, like a lot of people teaching. There are people that actually have been done, done the, yeah, the no, hard yeah. yards, yeah. understand, have the expertise. And people just, just like charlatans, like you have it everywhere. You always had, but now they're also there, you know, trying to. But I think because it, the, the internet's still a very new like thing that taking taking like so some becoming so much powerful right now just globalizes I think access people for everybody. start will be better at judge mm. soon they'll be be able to kind of like oh this guy man look uh, they'll check more you know what i mean I don't like agree i do that. a lot more checks now like on everything that i used to do like you know i'll try to get more reviews when i go to a, even a restaurant or a hotel I'll try, and I'm not one person that tells me something. I'm going to mm. go and go through it and review and kind of filter, be yeah. able to filter better information. I never look at the one one star reviews. Yeah. Because there's always an agenda there. Oh, man, Nothing I saw one, one in a hotel. Not many one stars. I saw one in a hotel in Thailand, which, I, by the way, I love the hotel <laughs> because it's a very good price, you know, and et cetera. This guy was like, I swear, God, man, this is a one star. Everyone loved the hotel, man. Yeah. This guy said, the water on the, on the, on the, on the tap takes long time to go through the through the hole and I'm like, man, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, these people it's got nothing better to bitch. do. Yeah, I there's, just wanna, there's five pools in a hotel, man, yeah. right at the beach, man. Like, I just you know, wanna, bars, the, swimming bars, you know. I just want to comment on what you said before. Is you like, got a chronometer. Pe people are going to like gonna improve on that and all this stuff. I don't agree with that because you're somebody that's experienced a lot of stuff through life. You're somebody that's exposed yourself to all these things and that's why you have that perspective. I think it's silly to compare the way you view things is the way other people view things because I have have, have had that problem with teaching jiu-jitsu my whole life, man. I expect people to understand jiu-jitsu the way I understand <laughs> yeah, jiu-jitsu. Right, yeah, it's not possible, man. Unless they've done the shit that I've done, unless they've dedicated the amount of time that I've dedicated to this shit, they're never going to understand that. So that's why I'm going to like kind of rephrase my question. Like how... I'm how kind of glad to hear that. How do, how do you, how do you kind of like... How do you, as a human being that doesn't understand this stuff, that doesn't know what to look for, that doesn't, how do you find trust in the process as a human being that is not aware of these things? You can learn through experience, 100%. That's probably the best way for everybody. Well, just like learn. you've learned. It's whether you accept to learn. <laughs> Okay. You know what I mean? So how do you how do you accept to learn then? Like hey, what 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 you makes you just keep getting beaten down, don't you? Not just in jujitsu, but in life. No, in life, I know. Yeah. But like, how, what what separates you from somebody that chose to learn to somebody else that chooses not to learn? And why do they refuse to learn? Like, what where does that attitude why? come from? Why? Because there's always an easy out. Okay, yeah, you haven't learned at school properly, and you can't get a job. You never went to university because you never chose to learn properly, yeah. right? They don't have a job, so they. They think, oh, I'll just get the doll. There's an, there's an easy out. That's why they don't get to learn. But if they want a better life than that, if they want a better life, they have to choose to learn. They have to. Or else it's just misery and then they top themselves. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? They yeah, or they just alone. have a hor- horrible existence and they just yeah. resent everybody. And they're that person and hateful that, and shit. Yeah. How was your day? Oh, you know, like yeah. they, they never have anything positive to say. There's nothing ever great. There's nothing. Yeah, it's a cancerous thing to be around. Yeah, yeah. yeah the misery loves company sort yeah. of thing. And it's... It, it's life. You're going. But man, I, this this shit makes me a repulsed <laughs> in human beings. Man, this type of shit. It's like, how can you be in such a positive situation in the world, in life, and so privileged, and you make a conscious choice to be a, like a mediocre, horror, horror, like a garbage individual? But you don't surround yourself with those sort of people, do you? No, they. Well, by default, they'll they'll remove themselves. Man. Yeah, but that's that's but that's you. You know what I mean? You you yeah. you've taught you've taught yourself not even taught yourself, you've naturally come to that, okay, I'm just going to surround myself with people that support me and make me better as a human. We will be training soon to make a better better lifestyle balance for ourselves. Yeah, I need to Uh, Mm -hmm. How, how, um, but, boy, I think it was a really nice But let's just finish with this. Like, man, like, what do you you think on that point? Like, why why do people choose to choose this life over the other, man. Like, why Why do people choose never to improve as opposed to, like, man, you have every other one you to improve, but you just refuse. You just cut that off. Some people choose not to, man. Some people don't want to. They legitimately don't want to. They just want to be comfortable? Yeah, like, what's just, the... It's too hard. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the more the more you hide, the more hard it gets, yep. the more you're going to hide. And then you're just going to leave in That's your... That's like that downward spiral kind yeah, of momentum. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Exactly. Well, they just get they're stuck just, They're just committed and the to that And the more you do it, the more you challenge yourself, the more you go, no, no, it's not about money. It's not about proving no one. I mean, I just want, I want to see if everything I experienced before... I can okay. put on the next one, you know. No, kind of, that kind of makes sense. I think that's like a good way to summarize. It's like people are stuck in that kind of downward spiral and they don't know how to get out or, or they don't, don't want, want to. to. Yeah. Yeah. 100% yeah. don't want to, man. Because at least in the downward spiral, you can, you can complain about shit and not be responsible for anything. Yeah. You don't have to yeah, be exactly. responsible. Exactly. Life, life no more, yeah. oh, I feel sorry for myself. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. No, but that's, that's the way it is. It's easy. Yeah. All right. Man, you, everyone will know a guy that maybe had a business like 20 years ago and you Still talk to him, you it. talk about that business, you know, and how we and excuse, there. excuse, yeah. excuse. Man, and he never done anything because he didn't want to try anything after that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and Yo, you, you could have, to fail. you could use the, all the lessons and go <laughs> again. And, and I'm pretty sure that the fact that he like had the business when he was young is a very good, um, it's a very experience. good experience, man, yeah. because... When you set up a business, um, when you when you set up a business first, it's kind of funny, but you just go, oh, I'm so happy I set up the business, but you don't understand, man, so what? Now it's time to, yeah, now you need to operate because, yeah. because, you know, it's not, yeah, <clears throat> it's not like, oh, woohoo, you know, so yeah, you go through that yeah. one yeah. once earlier, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Now you know what to do, what to have to achieve, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah you got to make the money now. Yeah. All righty, well, this is a um, very... Uh, I don't know, more of a like a motivation lifestyle kind of talk anyway. All um, unmotivational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's no, hard, man. Life's yeah. hard. Life's get hard. Get it. on with it. Yep. Move, get active and do something. Do don't something, sit man. there and stay in that yep. shitty spiral. All right. Well, man, Casey, thank you so much for coming on, man. I really me. actually value your input on a lot of these topics and stuff like that. And like, it's just nice to sit with somebody genuine that's accountable for their shit that is honest about like what everything that they've experienced in life and like man it's 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 awesome to sit and talk with people about real stuff that everybody experiences and it, you just have a positive frame of looking at it as opposed to that negative one so yeah be genuine so much, that's what the world needs at, at the moment guys just genuine people just real yeah just be real yeah, yeah. yeah be, be real, real. Yeah. oh thank you very much Thanks, Casey. really appreciate it thank you so much let's for train on. right now let's <laughs> <Cheers. laughs> Cheers. do some force let's train. Yeah, make force. some force make <laughs> some force alright thank you alright thank you